Welcome to Voice Print with Trevor Duvall and guests. And now, your host and mine, Trevor Duvall. Welcome back, my loyal fans, to Voice Print with Trevor DeVal and guests. As always, I am your intrepid host, Trevor DeVal. And today, we have a very, very special epi episode for you for episode 29 of Voice Print. We are coming to you live from Coco Studios in beautiful downtown Vancouver, British Columbia. And we are here in the studio to attend the wrap-up of the final episode of a new show. A new show that some of you may have already heard about. Voltron Force! The remake of Voltron. Uh, so without further ado, I want to get right into it, because we've got a whole room full of very talented and interesting people. <laughs> so <laughs> why don't, uh, why don't right. we... This isn't the entire cast, but it's, it's a lot of them. So why don't we start over here and tell us who you are and who you're playing. Giles Panton, I play Keith. My name's Andrew Francis, and I play Lance. Ashley Ball playing Princess Allura. Um, I'm Sam Vincent, and no one's been talking about the color of their lions. Okay. Come on, guys. Yeah. I'm Sam Vincent. Yes. I am the new incarnation of Pidge, Green Lion. Go Giles, back. Giles parenting Keith in the Black Lion. Andrew Francis in the Red Lion, playing Lance. Ty Olson playing Hunk, Yellow Lion. I'm Yellow Lion. No. No. <laughs> oh, my no. goodness. Stop. You know what? Because <laughs> we don't want to reveal every secret <laughs> yes. that's coming up that's, in the new that's, season, that's so really let's keep thing. that in context. It hasn't okay? aired we, yet. The so the it's the beginning. <laughs> What's going on? At the on? beginning. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. At the beginning. <laughs> okay. Let's carry on here with you, yeah, Vincent. We get lots of Hong Kongs. <laughs> what? Hong Kong, Hong Kongs. The the wong, wong, the they're gonna put the sound in, not Hong Kongs. Wow. Thanks, yes. Man. Thanks, oh, man. you are so bad. Oh, okay. Oh Jesus. My name is Vincent Tong. I play a new cadet of Voltron Force. His name is Daniel. Hey, I'm Doran Bell Jr. and I play another cadet, and his name is Vince. Hi, I'm Shannon Chan Ken, and I play another cadet named Larmina. And you're 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 related and... to who? You're oh, right. I'm related to. Allura. Uh -huh. She's and, my aunt. Oh, she's your aunt. <laughs> and on the uh, on the phone patch, we have the creator of the show, Mr. Jeremy Corey. Say hello, Jeremy. Hey, how are you, Trevor? Great to be here. Not quite the creator of the show. Oh. But, uh, I am guiding Voltron in his newest creation. You are Much the... like Voltron, a lot of people were involved in this big role. Of course, of course. But you you are the guiding hand, the uh, guiding uh, force. Lead geek. He's <laughs> the nerd <laughs> firewall. The That's lead right. geek. That's awesome. Jeremy will form the So... Head. Let me start the show by, by addressing a question to you and, uh, as well, to the cast. Um, for those of you uh, out there in Internet land who may not be intimately familiar with the show, do tell us, Jeremy, uh, what exactly is the show about? Sure. Well, Voltron Force is a new update on the classic animated series from 1984, Voltron Defender of the Universe. And this is kind of a, uh, a, a new vision for the show that pays a lot of respect to the, uh, the series uh, uh, that came before it. But we've uh, injected some new blood into it and these new cadets who kind of serve as the uh, point of entry for our audience. And uh, it's going to be great. It's aimed uh, a little younger at kids, but uh, we're keeping the hand-drawn style, the 2D animation. But we're also fusing that with some cool CGI lions that uh, are also going to be tune shaded. So it's uh, it's Voltron for 2011, and uh, it's coming out great. Well, that sounds very exciting. That sounds very exciting. Um, <laughs> people are people are removing articles of clothing now because you said it was supposed to be casual, Jeremy. So people are really taking that to heart. It's, it's oh not. Uh, I'm sitting here uh, having to stare it's at. It's not Ty's a visual junk. medium. It's great. He's wearing boxers and a head. I see why they call him. Hunk. Um. <laughs> wow. uh, You're all role models for children. Oh yes, apparently. Yes. This Let's this is supposed to be sort of an all ages show. Yeah, that's a good thing it's not a video podcast. <laughs> can I say? I'm, so, so, I'm sorry. I'm just tripping because <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I would I would see Mr. Tong in his, his thermals. I didn't know he's wearing I, thermals. I know. Snowing. <laughs> Snowing. <laughs> He's, so hot. he's got a full body suit on right it now. It is camel underwear. It's quite interesting. Yeah. 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 The 
multiple thermals. This is hilarious to me that only in Vancouver, only in Vancouver, you know, it snows for one day and half the cast shows up in thermal underwear like it's 40 below. Unbelievable. Anyway, listen, Jeremy, tell me, uh, tell me, how did, how did Voltron come to be remade into this form? Well, it's really from fan demand. I mean, uh, through the last 26 years, uh, uh, fans have always wanted a, a great new update to the uh, Voltron mythology. We did a series in 98, Voltron the Third Dimension, that used CGI, but we really look at this series as a return to Voltron's roots. So uh, Kickstart Productions and producer Jason Netter just finally made the stars align, and uh, um, the uh, president of Nicktoons is a huge Voltron fan as well, and uh, we saw an opportunity here to get uh, on Nicktoons and, and really create something that uh, uh, the classic fans can watch with their kids, which is kind of the whole goal of the series. So uh, it just all came together like uh, Voltron, which is a metaphor you're going to hear a lot of. Well, that's great. I'm, uh, certainly judging by the fan reaction already, it's, uh, it's set to be a really big show. And actors... Do you guys, I mean, now you've, you've finished the, the series. Of the, how many episodes did you do? Is it 26? 26. 26 <laughs> episodes. Uh, now that here on the, on the last day, at the end of all things, no. at least for the first season. <laughs> uh, <laughs> how, uh, how was it? How, how was the experience? Working on Voltron, this classic show. Well, I think we should start with Giles, because Giles... Uh, this is this your first is, is your big first show, isn't it, This is your first into an yeah. animated This series. is my first cartoon, and I hooked up the lead. It was well... Awesome. <laughs> Okay, well then you know what? You yeah, know what? Yeah. I'm pretty sure yeah. I know what the rest of these chumps are going to say, but I do want to hear from you. <laughs> what was your experience working on the show as a lead on, on the new Voltron? It's phenomenal. I uh, the first three episodes, I it was such a sharp learning curve for me. I didn't even know how to fight. They kept telling me I sounded like I was in a kung fu movie. It was it was hey. and, or he was pooping. That's what they. <laughs> <laughs> or I was, oh, <laughs> yeah, the, oh. there is, there's a lot of constipated fighting going on. Um, but no, it's it, it was really cool. I really got to find my uh, my legs per se by watching everybody, learning from everyone here. It was um, I had I had no idea what was going on, and just to to figure out how everything fits together, I'm. Th so thankful it was an ensemble cast, because if I had been in here on my own, that would have been interesting. <laughs> well, you, you certainly had an opportunity to learn from some of the best, let me say. There's yeah. some very, very talented people in this room. So well, when I was so looking lucky. at like, the roll call the first day, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like that's Mr. Optimus Prime, that's this, that's that. Like, all, <laughs> all this stuff. It was, it was cool for me. We so, cool. insisted he call us by our other names. Yes, no, naturally. yes, naturally. yes. I, I didn't earn the right to call them by their real names until, <laughs> until today, actually. Thanks. Was really, was Wait, really who sweet. are you people? What? Like, what? You're not... Hey, Giles. Guess what? My name's Sam. How you doing, buddy? What? Really? Your name's Sam for real? What? Yeah, you can call me Sam today. So l let me ask you this, too. I see in the room now it's 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 a predominantly male cast, as is typical with shows of this kind of ilk. Yes. So what's it like for for uh, Ashley and Shannon to be the, the lone uh, estrogen floating about in the room? It's so awesome. I like it. I, it's a, such a different world being in a, a room with, like, this many males. <laughs> a lot of the time you know you're doing, like, like... Strawberry shortcake or whatever yeah, else. Yeah. It's like a full room of women, and you're like, my period, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> this is like, oh this is like. Don't whole... think I've seen those shows. I don't think I've seen those shows. It's a nice change. It's a nice My little it's period. Nice <laughs> period. <laughs> the princess period. <laughs> It's really nice. Ty, Ty's actually usually in his underwear. Uh, I see. So this is, yeah. a, this is a normal it's a, look for it's him. A huge, I know. <laughs> yeah. Huge Black socks and boxers. <laughs> Often distracted. And what about what about for you, Shannon? I like it. I like the male dominance, especially because I don't usually get to play a tough character. And, right. And I feel like watching all these male guys do their stuff, I can kind of... You learn from yeah, it, Yeah, exactly. You learn I do. It. As I'm panning in on Tong's <laughs> thermals. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly Shannon, seems... Uh, can I just add on the uh, all the ladies front, that yes. uh, all the single ladies, I would say that this, uh, uh, especially if you look back on 1984, Princess Alora was one of the more progressive female leads to really take control, take it in a blue lion, you know, Definitely. run with the big boys. And I'd say that this show, particularly your character, has really developed and just become this great fixation uh, uh, point there for the yeah. series. I would say we're probably one of the more progressive shows that are going to be on TV. And I don't want to sound like a completely testosterone maxim edition of uh, no, Voltron. No, totally. This is, yeah, this is actually, I think your character really grew into something uh, special here, and it's I think, a pleasure. I think it's a credit to the show that we've actually, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we ever touch on the gender issue at all. No, the women no, in this show are, are just without question 
equals uh, to all the the men, and it's yeah. never even brought up, mm -hmm. which I think is really a, you know Absolutely. a compliment to the show. Yeah, and totally. certainly, judging by what I was hearing from outside, with all of the yelling, fighting, yelling, <laughs> rawr, going, I heard I heard your voice in here, and yes, I heard yes, your yes. voice in here. <laughs> so it's not just the boys roaring. No, <laughs> it sounds no. especially today was it. It sounded like there was a lot of rawr, rawr, yeah, it's yelling, it's, screamy. It's a big battle. Well, big, right. big fights, big, which of course we won't discuss the details. Well, without of course. without giving too much away, the you can definitely, there is a story, it's about the younger generation, the new generation of Voltron earning their stripes, so to speak, and that's the progression throughout the series is, is them dealing with those challenges mm -hmm. and being put in moments where they have to prove themselves, and it, that, that's what makes the, the journey for the new young cadets interesting, uh, so that's, that's a major aspect of the show that I think is really cool, and also just based on the drawings and the, the background stuff and all the ships and everything that we've seen so far, this show is going to look really, yeah, really cool. Awesome. Like People yeah. are really going to geek out on the show, just the way it looks <laughs> and, and the, the music. way the characters and the music and everything. Yeah, so. and the music. So uh, sweet. Right on. Yeah. Well, I, for one, am looking forward to it. As I know are the fans out there. And speaking of fans, we do have a number of questions from the fans for uh, mm -hmm. various and sundry. Uh, first of all, our biggest fan of all, Martin from YTV in Toronto. He has his own little section on the show called Martin's Mailbag. Martin's Mailbag. Um, so first of all, he wants to remind us that uh, you can hear your favorite Vancouver voice actors this winter on YTV on Being Ian, Robots, League of Super Evil, and Kid vs. Cat, and on Teletoon, George of the Jungle, and Johnny Test. Uh, Martin has a question for all of the Voltron voice actors. How does it feel playing the Voltron roles previously played by such veterans like Michael Bell, Peter Cullen, Lenny Weinrieb, Neil Ross, Jack Angel, and BJ Ward, these big, massive, massive voice actors in the industry? <laughs> Doran's looking at me like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> <laughs> Did I give you that look? <laughs> I mean, it was a big show. It's an iconic show, right? It's a, it's a, it's a huge show. And uh, does that, did that have any sort of uh, meaning for you or any sort of impact on your performance or anything like that? Or did you... uh, uh, it, personally, it's always been part of my charm that I, um, I'm so bad with that stuff that uh, I, I never have to face. Because uh, it is, a, it, as a, a voice actor and, a, and an actor in general, it is one of those realities you face that sometimes with these remakes. And, uh, um, and I've been fortunate enough never to know who the hell that people are talking about. <laughs> <laughs> even some of my contemporaries, even some of the people in town, I'm like, ooh, oh. <laughs> I'm a little, uh, yeah, so I... I'm you, saying that about Sam all the time. Who, who is that? <laughs> yes. what? What? So, you know, I think, because you're right, there is a lot of pressure coming in, especially if people are expecting you to um, to fill those boots. And I think, I'm, personally, I'm lucky not to have to uh, to deal with that, but I think if you if you are in one of those rare cases where you do, the best thing you can do is just go, I'm not filling those boots. I'm, I'm creating my own thing here, and I'm, uh, I'm going to honor the show and the integrity of the show and not worry about walking in those footsteps so that's probably the best uh best way to approach it too, <clears throat> so you can create something new and create something yourself yeah and, and things you know life. styles change too you know yeah. I, 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 some of the shows that were huge in 84 um they simply wouldn't uh, survive if you just left them as as they were you mm -hmm. have to kind of take into consideration there's been a few decades since then and, yeah. and people have changed and people have evolved and uh Things are accepted a little differently, and our and views are a little different. Style and of the show also, a lot. yeah, there's a there's you know we're, we're talking about there's going to be old Voltron fans, and there's going to be a new generation of Voltron fans that may not have heard the previous show, and you're always going to have differing opinions because we really are kind of reinventing, you know, the show again, and with the characters and everything, we're just you know starting afresh, and, and there's going to be a lot of people who love. The voices from the old Voltron, you know, and like there's a reason voice. for that because there's yeah. a very classic sense to those voices, and uh, you know, but this is new, and uh, you know, I don't know if Jerry wants to add about making the decision uh, to take a chance on Vancouver actors and, and coming up here to look for talent. I mean, I, I want to say, before, you know, just on that note, though, it's yeah. like the one of the great things about mm -hmm. this show is that the people who enjoyed it in 1984 have kids who will enjoy it now, and it is one of those uh, we are in in a time. Of our lives, where we can enjoy that uh, that that retro nostalgia of watching a show like Voltron with our kids, mm -hmm. with our twelve-year-old boy, and going, "Look, yeah, yeah, when I watch this, this I know what's going to happen." Here. You know, <laughs> I was going to say, you know, to be perfectly honest, it is going to be a little bit of a sales job to our classic fans, 
Um, you know, Neil Ross and these guys, as you said, this is the Hall of Fame. These guys, you know, voiced our childhoods between, you know, who else they were and Duke and Optimus Prime and all these uh, people. But I think what I discovered personally, a lot, it became like this Star Trek remake, you know, that the J.J. The Abrams did where it was just like, yeah, those are those characters. And, yes, we do respect them. And I would argue even flesh them out more than they were in 1984 and just – Suddenly, by the end, you know, they've become these people, and you couldn't hear anybody else but, you know, Giles is keys and, you know, what Andrew does with, uh, um, with Lance. So uh, I just ask that fans give them a chance. And, yeah, at first it might be like, oh, well, that's not my guy. But you know what? As these guys just said, it's, uh, it's time for the new generation, and I, I think they're going to discover what we did, and that's there's these fresh, fun voices that uh, you're going to fall in love with. We, we dare you not to fall in love with Shannon as Larmy. <laughs> there you go. There's a, there's a pretty... Uh, Sweet. There's a pretty strong shell right there. <laughs> uh, this next question is from Logan. Uh, Logan says, I'm writing to ask about the newest Voltron series, Voltron Force. I have two questions regarding the show. The first deals with continuity. Will the new series be following on from the original 80s show, or is it a clean slate for storyline progression? And my second question uh, pertains to the cast. Did any of you listen to the original cast voices to influence your performance, or did you prefer to uh, offer a strictly original interpretation of the character, which we kind of were just talking about? But in terms of the uh, the storyline progression coming on from the 80s, is it something brand new, or is it uh, is it uh, a continuation? Uh, it's my understanding that it's actually uh, a continuation. Is that correct, Jeremy? Yeah, we like to say based on because in certain areas we would just, you know, do what was best for the uh, do for the story. For instance, you know, Balto was uh, blown up in the original. That's Pidge's home planet. But we had this great idea and this great visual look for Balto that we wanted to explore. So, you know, we fudge a little bit in some areas. So we like to say based on. But I can honestly tell you I, I see no other series on TV that respects what came before 25 years ago. So it's going to be very accessible for new fans. But old fans are going to be able to tune in as well and go, oh, I remember. That, yeah. Well, that's great. That's sort of like the best of all possible worlds, right it, there. It is. It's a good. It's a good hybrid. And, and, and I, I, uh, yeah, you. Can. <coughs> I certainly, I certainly researched uh, the original, the original uh, Keith Black line because there's a lot of iconic lines, and I, I wanted to, I wanted to honor that. I think, I think it's, a, it's an amazing privilege for me to be on this show, and so <laughs> I will say that Keith has stood true by his, uh, a lot of his cadence. Though he has he has grizzled in his years, I will say. So let me ask you this, Giles: When you were doing your research, did you did you in any way try and emulate the voice of the original actor, or was it just the attitude of the character? No, I I uh, I, I, I wanted to emulate the attitude and the charge. Um, I I think this show has been amazing. Uh, there's been so much grace and. When I auditioned originally, I hadn't I didn't remember the voices from before, and and I. I booked based off of the thing I did, so I kept that, but I figured out how I could modify it to, to really honor the original voices. Cool. But no, I didn't try to emulate it. It was more the, uh, the energy, I'd say. Cool, cool. Um, I've got another couple of questions here, and some of these questions uh, sort of come out of left field, guys, so bear with me here. But this one's from, <laughs> this one's from uh, Justin. Two questions for Andrew, first of all. Uh, is working on Voltron a dream come true for you? Is it a dream? Well, I can see this is just for me, wasn't it? Yes, well, thank you for asking. Uh, it was, actually, now that you ask. Um, uh, Voltron, uh, I'd always heard a lot, a lot about Voltron, you know, through the hip-hop community, the music that I listened to, and just, like, T-shirts and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, when I first went for the part and when I booked the gig, I went back and watched all the old, uh, the old episodes and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's really tough to to do what they did back then because it was so different. You know what I mean? Like, the animation was different. The pacing is different. Mm -hmm. Like, it's so crazy. So was it a dream come true? Of course it was, right? But, um, yeah, it was like a brand new thing. Cool, cool. Can I just add for myself? I yes, know this question wasn't for me, but I was a huge, huge fan as, as, of the show when I was a kid. I watched this thing religiously and, like, had all the action figures. I, had the, <laughs> I, I think I had the vehicle Voltron. Force, uh, this, you're hardcore. Yeah, I know. There's a totally different series uh, aside from the the Defender of the Universe one. But like, so, and I like would love watching the end scene. And Pidge was my favorite, my favorite guy, because he was always doing those acrobatic flips and stuff like that, which I like to do. And and he, I always remember he was doing like a one-handed handstand, I think, on top of the green line at the end of the credits. Mm -hmm. And like, <laughs> I like wow. love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> and so, and so for me, when I heard, like, I was, I was on, on uh, in Victoria doing a play at the time, and my agent was like, "Oh, it's too bad you're not here. They're doing a new series, some V show." I'm like, "Oh, really? <laughs> well, send me the sides. I'll, I'll do it on my laptop." And then I, I heard it's Voltron. I'm like, "Are you joking me? They're doing a new Voltron?" I was so jacked. 
And so when I I was on the phone, so like, I quit the play. Yeah, that's what I told you. Between Act Two. Yeah. So it was it was it definitely is a dream come true for me personally to be on this show because it was such a big huge part of my childhood. Did you audition for Pete for Bridge? No, I he just, did. He even sent I? in a picture of him doing a hand. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Who's the guy wearing the green barrette and the glasses? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I when I can I say something about the hip the whole hip hop connection to it? Yeah, what is that all about? Because I know you, I know I looked over it and Ashley kind of like gave like what? form like Voltron. Like a what? <laughs> I can I, when I booked the show I was in Toronto. At a time, I was like auditioning and working on music and stuff in New York and going back and forth. And I remember reading the sides, and someone asked me in a studio session I was in. I was singing some R&B over some hip hop stuff, and this one cat was like, "Like Voltron, like Voltron, Voltron." <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, I guess," because I didn't really watch it back in the day. Right. I heard about it, but I didn't really watch it. And this dude was like tripping out in the studio. You go out to do Voltron, son? For real? Like Voltron. I'm like, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And then it's funny because then I started going, then he started getting excited and going back and finding like lines from hip hop artists back in the day, like Wu Tang Clan and different people, you know, making analogies towards Voltron. Like, we form like Voltron, we a team, and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, wow. Yeah. So it's interesting. And when you hear like rumors about people like Pharrell Williams of the Neptunes, um, joining forces with a huge producers like, um, you know, I think it was, um, oh, what's his name? That's old. Yeah, that's uh, when we were working with Mark Gordon. For yeah, I heard all kind of, he mentioned that too, all kind of rumors, because right away he got on Google and was like, oh my goodness, Voltron's coming back. So like, you know what I mean? But <laughs> it's, it's really cool though. I was just going to say, we were in the airport one time and Will I Am was there. He's picking up somebody and he's signing autographs, you know, everybody freaking out, right? And we just had a feeling in uh, Tiffany or a uh, co-worker here went up and was just, she just said, Voltron, and just suddenly it totally turned around, and like he wanted our autograph. Oh and wow! It just it's just it's turned into this thing, and what we found is what I call Generation Voltron are today's decision makers, you know, artists, and uh, it, it's it, the love for this thing. People just don't you know kind of remember it; they have a real passion for it. Our next question is uh, from Timo in Germany. This is sort of an interesting one. Uh, Timo says, hi, Trevor and folks. If you remember, I was the German voice actor rookie who runs a little website and podcasts about German voice actors. I'm still an avid listener of your podcast, and the announcement of the Voltron Force recording for this episode caught my special attention. That's because I was in charge for the German dub of the classic Voltron series, <laughs> or rather for the Lion Force, the Go Lion part. You see, the Lion Force part wasn't completely dubbed back in the 90s when the show was aired over here in Germany. Uh, for the DVDs, they got me and my boys to do a complete new dub. Um, if you, one of you or your fantastic guests are interested, we posted some background information on WEP's official board, and I'll put that link on the website. Um, he does have a question here. <laughs> do any of you guys know whether Sven Holgerson will appear in the new show, <laughs> oh. and who will play him? Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy should feel that. And, and, uh, yeah. No, I'm going to leave that to Jeremy. Sure, and, uh, well, yes. you'll have to watch uh, uh, May on uh, Nicktoons. So I will say there's a lot of uh, characters that uh, pop up, and uh, you just watch for some of the surprises. Okay, well, he, the, the second part of that question was about the Norwegian accent, but I guess we'll find out <laughs> <laughs> what direction old Sven is going to go in, <laughs> if, he, he, if he ever if. does, in fact, show up. <laughs> Uh, what else do we have? Oh, yes, this is from uh, Robin in Sydney, Australia, down under. He says, hello, Trevor, got a quick question, perhaps, for the World Events production side of things. Apart from the new Lion Voltron series being made, will we perhaps see anything of the Vehicle Force Voltron also or not? It would be nice to see both Voltrons integrated in the same series if possible. Jeremy, can you speak to that question? Yeah, what, I mean, what does that make all the characters when you combine vehicle and lion, like over 50? <laughs> that was always the tough thing about Vehicle Voltron, coming with, you know, so many characters. Uh, I won't uh, uh, say uh, uh, no, but I won't say yes. I'll have to say uh, keep watching. But uh, we hear you loud and clear, Vehicle Voltron fans, and uh, keep buying the DVDs so, uh, so I can convince uh, my bosses how much love there is for the vehicle, or our car Voltron, as it is affectionately known as. Yes, and it'll undoubtedly make uh, uh, Vincent happy, too. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, uh, there, there, you know, uh, we do uh, have some fun with some other robots and things in the show, so uh, it might not be exactly what you were looking for, but uh, uh, you'll see. Uh, 
some other fun, uh, maybe some uh, homages to Voltron. But as, we all, as we all know, there's only one Lion Voltron. That's so. right. The suspense is killing me. I can't <laughs> wait to play with your toys. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, from Melissa. This is for Andrew once again. Oh, oh, oh yes. It's my mom, all right? Yeah. <laughs> a <trend> um, <laughs> she says, Andrew Francis, I completely fail and have never watched an episode of Voltron, so I want you to give me three reasons why I should watch this new Voltron series, and you're not allowed to say because I am in it. Uh. <laughs> also, when the heck are you going to get back uh, to Toronto so I can give you a big hug? Ooh. Of oh. awesomeness. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Three reasons. You know what? I will actually open this up to everybody. Three reasons oh. to watch the show that do not include because I'm in it. I'd say uh, the first reason is because it's going to look so freaking cool. Uh, Jeremy came up here with the laptop and he had all the the first animations and the pre this and the that and the thing and the opening with the song and all that stuff. So it's going to be super action packed. It's going to look awesome and it's just going to be a good time. You should definitely watch it because Andrew's in it. That's another <laughs> big reason you should watch it. I'm not yeah. Andrew. Yeah. And other reasons? Other reasons to watch it? The writing's fabulous. The yeah. writing's fabulous. Every episode, I'm reading it at home before I come in. I'm just like, what? Damn. What? what? This is amazing. <laughs> what? Yeah. You're supposed to read it before you come in. As I'm reading it, walking in the <laughs> No, I will say that uh, to add to the, the whole writing uh, component. Every episode... There, there's a new dimension to the story. It builds and builds and ramps up and ramps up and ramps up and, and until, you know, it's... Oh! So, <laughs> that's how I describe it. The show, watch it because it's... Oh! So, cool. that's what I'm going to say. Uh, this is robot a... lions picking up tanks with their jaws, throwing them around. What six-year-old kid? Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's yeah. Voltron. What, what 38-year-old man universe. can resist exactly. that? I, mean, I know, on. absolutely. Uh, this is another question. Oh, and once again, I've forgotten to say who it's from. I'm a bit stupid sometimes. Oh, you're a very so, bad man. So, so very, very, yeah, very, very, very stupid of me. This, uh, this is to Jeremy, actually. Uh, wants to know, this mystery person whose name I didn't write, uh, how long did it take to find all the correct voices for Voltron? What was the audition process like? Was it uh, an extremely lengthy process to try and find the right voices for these characters, or was it something that just sort of clicked right away, or how did that work? Well, getting them all into the proper tights, just to see, you know, <laughs> who was yes. for the Yes, right they're wearing voice. them now. Yes. I'm, yes. I'm horrified uh, to report. Uh, I think it was just like, you know, Rubik's Cube a little bit, where it was kind of just, you know, putting the pieces together. Everybody had really strong auditions for uh, the different parts. And it's funny, we were just listening to, like, you know, say Andrew's audition for Keith, Sam's audition for Keith, and it's, like, it's just so, it's like, oh, my gosh, I couldn't imagine him as anyone else. So it actually went fairly quickly. We had Loris Lunsford, who's an experienced producer with, you know, Johnny Test. Mm -hmm. So she was able to guide us in a, in a couple different directions. And then, you know, some of them, it was, some of it was just really kind of easy when you hear, like, you know, Ashley Ball's voice, and you're just like, yeah, that captures the warmth of Princess Alora. And you really say, you know, yes, it's not, uh, you know, your B.J. Ward or something from back in the day. This a new dimension to it so it actually fell together really quickly and we just you know we discovered these uh, these amazing voice talents and, uh, can i just so, say uh, that this is my first know. actual woman role that i've ever played do your kid <laughs> ever do your kid uh, like pretty much yeah i've never gotten to play like an actual woman on a show wow i'm usually like either a little girl or a little boy like play this. the boy <laughs> <laughs> So I uh, thank you for taking a risk on me uh, for, wow. for that one. And what Actually, a woman I don't know if you've read ahead, but we changed some things, kind of crying game style. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my God>. Yes. <laughs> no spoilers. No spoilers. Playing, I am so sick of playing Barbie. <laughs> <laughs> this is our uh, this is our final question. This is for all of the cast. How has working on this show? Um, uh, how have you grown and learned from your experience? Working Such on Such wholesome, wholesome, wholesome Aren't they just, they just, and there's some apple pie afterwards for everybody. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> How have you grown and learned from this experience? Obviously, we've, we've uh, <clears throat> already spoken to Giles about, about this being his first time <clears throat> and learning from, from seeing the greats in this room perform, but. I think actually to, to go on that, uh, you know, there's a few newer people. I guess Giles is the, the newest person, right? But it's different. A lot of times when you get in a room like this, you're with all the seasoned pros, you know? It's like, it's you, it's Sam, it's like, you know, you got Scott, you got all, all your the guys, Duvall. right? Trap, oh, that, he was the you. He was the first I'm you. the you in this case. Thank you, Blake. Thank you for I thought he said Jew. Uh, Jew, yes, there's a few. <laughs> Jew. Uh, but, you know, you get in the room and there's all these guys that are seasoned vets and stuff. And, like, I personally, I've been doing this for a long time and I've learned everything I know from guys like you and guys like Sam and guys like Scott, right? 
So it's cool to see a guy like Giles come in and, you know, like this episode here, there's, there's things when Canadians do stuff, you gotta say about, you gotta say house, you gotta do that whole thing. And when Giles started, I mean, it was like, you know, what about not this, like, it's the tightest mouth, you know what I mean? And I think he had a line today where it was like four abouts and three knots, and he just killed it, you know what I mean? So it's really fun watching somebody who's just starting in this industry, and then they come out of a series just like a seasoned guy. I, you know, listen, I, uh, I've been doing this a long time in the, in the industry up here, and uh, it's always the hugest compliment that, that I like to give the voice industry here, and I'm saying this to all of you guys in the room, myself excluded on this remark is that I'm always like when people go oh yeah the voice stuff is that's good I like to do that it's really fun and I'm like well dude look it is such a tight awesome group of people in this city I'm like the, you know there's a handful of people who do like 50 voices a piece with varying degrees of like tweaks this way and that I said I have no idea how I get these jobs <laughs> because I like I, I like I do my thing and I'm not bad at it but these guys are so good and I, and it really is true that the talent level for, for in the vocal community the voice community up here is is unbelievable it's really just yeah. off the charts mm -hmm. and I, I don't you know I don't know I've I watch a lot of uh, animated stuff with my kids and I, there's nothing I ever hear that I go yeah I know so and so can do that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it really you know it's that's the thing that's Especially always that. compounded everything every time I do one of these things I'm fortunate enough to sneak in the room somehow <laughs> I, I'm always I'm always like wow like how do I get a role when this guy can do like eight of them? <laughs> so, uh, and, and Ty, as you've alluded, you, you've alluded to the, uh, the you know the, the writing and things, this was a challenge. Todd Garfield, a writer uh, who, who just, as these guys said, just did a fantastic job with the characters. And this just isn't a show where it's like you know, run over here. What the you know? It's really the action is always motivated by character things, and your characters grow from when we see them in uh, you know yeah. the first episode to the last one. So you know, it, it, it has not been easy. And I know particularly you know Vince and Tong, the things we do to you and <laughs> the places we put you in and uh and yeah watching uh keith grow and 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 seeing how the team has to all kind of vibe together again uh, um it was really cool so great well yeah. that about uh wraps up the questions for the show which brings us to the end of episode 29 of voice print with trevor deval and guests just a note from my regular listeners listeners out there for episode oh, i'm sorry what what are we on now are we on 29 or 30 i never remember 29. This is 29. <laughs> well, our next one, <laughs> whatever it is, our next one, we're going to have the lovely and talented Lisa Ann Belay in as a guest. Ow. So by all means, yeah, send yeah. your questions to voiceprint at trevordeval.com. And as always, you can send your comments, questions, or concerns to me at fans at trevordeval.com. I want to thank Wes here at Coco for allowing us into the studio. Yeah, Wesley Pants. I want to thank uh, I want to thank the cast here for being part of the show. You guys were great. Yeah. And, we great. Yes, go on. And uh, obviously, I want to thank Jeremy for uh, for uh, coming on the show and, and allowing us a, a sneak peek, uh, an exclusive look at, at the new Voltron. Can we just Absolutely. end this episode with a one, two, three, let's go Voltron yeah. for us? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's do it. Here we go. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Let's go Voltron Force! <laughs> <laughs>